everybody else all over, all over. Panama, where you at? Puerto Rico, where you at? Mexico, where you at? Venezuela, where you at? Don't stop. Peru, where you at? Dominican Republic, where you at? Don't stop. Cuba, where you at? Costa Rica, where you at? Colombia, where you at? Honduras, where you at? Ecuador, where you at? Bolivia, where you at? Argentina, where you at? Nicaragua, where you at? El Barrio, where you at? Come on, come on, save my life. Shout out to the hip hop public health. All the healthcare workers on the front line. Together, we can make a difference. What's good, y'all? This is Doug D. Fresh coming at you live and direct. All of y'all out there, I got a couple of things I want to talk to y'all about. Wash your hands, everybody. And everybody, wash your hands. Come on, wash your hands, everybody. And everybody, wash your hands. My people up town. Wash your hands, uh -huh. my people downtown. Wash your hands, uh -huh. people from the east coast. Wash your hands, uh -huh. people from the west coast. Wash your hands. That's right. First and foremost, please listen close. Take your time. Wash. Use a lot of soap from the front to the back, back to the front. Sing the hook where you at. That's exactly what we want. If you decide to leave, please take heed. Talk a social distance, at least six feet. On a bus or the train, riding in your car. The further you're away, then the better off you are. 20 seconds. Some more. You gotta be able to wash your hands like you never ever washed them before. 20 seconds or more. Don't try to wait, you'll make the greatest mistake. You need to wash them when you enter the door. 20 seconds or more. Take your time, sing a song, spit around. When you finish, you can put on some gloves. 20 seconds or more. It's very important to wash your hands. You're protecting everybody you love. Wash your hands, everybody. And everybody, wash your hands. 20 seconds Come on, more. wash your hands, everybody. And everybody, Wash your hands. When it's people from the more. Midwest, wash your hands. Uh, Dirty South, wash your hands. When it's people it's overseas, more. wash your hands. Uh -huh. And everybody. Wash your hands. Now if you catch a little fever, shortness of breath, slight little cough. You can feel it in your chest. You should call your doctor. Doctor know what's best. Don't go run into the hospital cause you could be a threat. The virus is contagious. Listen, they ain't playing. You ain't see the movie, yo, it's kinda like contagious. Gotta wash hands thoroughly. Even sanitize. Open up your eyes, we don't want this thing to ride. Coronavirus. And everybody, wash your hands. 20 seconds Come on, more. wash your hands, everybody. And everybody, wash your hands. My people uptown, more. wash your hands. Uh -huh. My people downtown, wash your hands. Uh -huh. People from more. the East Coast, wash your hands. Uh -huh. People from the West Coast, wash your yeah. hands. That's right. Huh. Epidemic, pants, damn it. Social distance, non existence. Don't resist this, get gone in an instance. If you miss this, Ever, damn it, pants, damn it, social distance, non existence, don't resist this, get gone in an instance, if you miss this. Epa, damn it, pan, damn it, social distance, non existence, don't resist this, get gone in an instance, if you miss this. When I have to sit for a long time, I feel... When I sit for a long time, I feel bored. bored. When I can't move, my brain feels tired. I would feel like... I just feel happy when I'm moving around doing physical activities. When I move, I feel energetic, excited, happy. It gives you like more energy during the day. Scientists say that when you move around a lot and you're learning your brain processes things faster. 
It's important for kids to move around because they get a lot of energy and it makes them want to learn more. We were moving a lot while we were learning. That makes me feel energized. When we got to stretch up, I felt like all my muscles were really relaxed. If we do more moves to improve, we could be healthier and we could stay active so our brains can learn more.
Hey everybody, if you would like to use closed captioning while you are watching this live YouTube stream, head on over to the CC icon, click it, it will turn red right underneath it, and subtitles in English will automatically get started. If you want to change the language that the subtitles are shown in, click settings, go up to subtitles, and then click on auto translate and then you can choose the language that you would like your subtitles to show up in. We would also like to remind you that these live sessions are intended for adults and will be publicly shared. Please refrain from sharing any personal details about yourself or your child during the Q&A segments or in the chat of these sessions. If you need translated transcripts of the live event in any of the nine languages from the New York City Department of Education, including English, those will be made available afterwards with the recorded session. Thank you and get ready for weekend wellness. Good morning, everybody. My name is DMC and the place to be. And the place to be this morning is with the New York Department of Education and Hip Hop Health. We are passionate about health, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And we are glad to be here with caregivers, educators, rappers and rockers and doctors and the parents. So we're gonna kick off a little discussion to talk about community immunity, what that is, and how we will continue to get through this pandemic and defeat and beat this virus. So before we get started, I would like to introduce the one and only incredible Deputy Chancellor LaShawn Robinson from the New York City, City Department of Education. Here she is. Wow, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I know you're down with Run DMC, In the place but I get a chance to run DOE. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome parents and family members. I welcome you with gratitude for being in community with us today especially to those family members experiencing grief, loss, injustice, and pain. And for all who join this space to share hope and healing, we know how much you provide for your children. And our hope for this Saturday morning is that you have a few minutes for your own self-care. Nothing could be more important than today's topic, essential to our community health, than focusing on understanding and acceptance of COVID vaccines. Our division, the Division of School Climate and Wellness, focuses on the whole child, which includes the physical, mental, and social emotional health of our students. The sponsoring office of this event, and I'm so very proud of them, the Office of School Wellness Programs, under the leadership of Lindsay Haar, focuses on physical and health education, academic subjects that provide students with skills and concepts that help them form healthy habits for life. And this national reckoning of seeing racial injustice play out in so many ways, especially related to health, we recognize that students from years past 
especially those of color, may have gone through New York City schools without consistent physical education, health education, or programs to help them stay active and healthy. We want you to know that your child and every child by law has the right to receive physical education and health education, and that we have a citywide wellness policy that describes these requirements in every school. For those of you who may have once been New York City students like me and are now family, parents, or caregivers of New York City students like me too, <laughs> we see you, we see you. We care about your wellness and what we teach your children is what we want for you. It's important for us to say, principals and schools can't do this alone. They need help and input from you. If you want to engage more around these issues, and I know you do, consider joining or creating a school wellness council. Wellness councils are group you can, groups you can join or create at your school with your principal, your physical education or health education teacher to make sure that wellness related instruction and programs remain a focus for our children. Our DOE wellness policy also highlights that community partnerships are essential to prioritizing school wellness which is why I'm so excited that we are partnering with Hip Hop Public Health on this three-part Saturday morning series to talk about self-care and important health messages. We are thrilled to work with Hip Hop Public Health founder, also known as the Hip Hop Doc, Dr. Olajide Williams. Dr. Williams is both a chief of staff and tenured professor of neurology at Columbia University. He has authored numerous scholarly works and received national awards for his work on community-based health interventions and has been profiled in Fast Company Magazine's 100 Most Creative People in Business, The Root 100's Most Influential, and BET's A-List and the 2015 New York Magazine's Best Doctors List. So we're bringing you the best and brightest. He will be joined by Dr. Monique Hedman Maxey, also known as Dr. Moflo, Hollis Queen's own DMC, Daryl McDaniels, who you already met. And we're lifting up healthy messages with talent, joy, and deep love of our city. I'm also excited to share that our very own Office of School Wellness Programs Health Education Program Manager, Ms. Emanuela Marat, will also join us. They'll highlight the self-care skills and concepts we share with students and the ways we can participate together around student wellness that can keep our children safe and healthy. For all that you already do to make our schools a community and our children strong and circumstances that challenge and test us all, and we're living through some right now, we appreciate you. We care about you. By being here today, you are demonstrating that you care about your health and that of your children, their health too. And you also care about the health of your loved ones. We hope you join us for the entire Weekend Wellness Series. We also hope today is as joyful and inspiring as your children are to us each and every day. And we thank you for being here to build a healthier future for our New York City family. Thank you again for being here. I'm honored to be in community with each and every one of you. Community is the most important thing that we have right now, our connection with each other. So thank you again for being here. I now hand it back over to our highly esteemed colleague and friend, Dr. Williams. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Deputy Chancellor Robinson. You know, you know, I was thinking about what you do and what your incredible team does. And I have to say, I, I'm not sure that there is another Deputy Chancellor um, 
of school climate and wellness in this country. So, you know, it's just a testimony to the incredible work you guys are doing at the Department of Education. Children are our future. Uh, but the most important thing is that we need to preserve their presence um, because today um, is a time when, you know, the future of all uh, our nations globally because of this pandemic is at a greater threat than we've seen in a in hundred years. Uh, and so talking about wellness, talking about uh, some of the issues that we're going to be discussing around our community immunity campaign is critically important because it, it, it has direct bearing uh, not only on today, but also on what tomorrow uh, is going to look like. And, and Hip Hop Public Health, you know, we, we are a, an organization that, that we believe the music is, is more than entertainment. Um, we believe that music is a powerful educational tool, a powerful motivational tool. Um, it is one of the reasons why I founded the organization with Dougie Fresh. It is one of the reasons why uh, we have such incredible esteemed artists uh, on our advisory board like your, like DMC and, and Chuck D and, and, and folks like Ashanti supporting the organization. Uh, what, we've, what we do is we basically try to help educate our community with the facts about health and try to dispel myths and try to mitigate the fears that, uh, uh, that, that surround our communities uh, when it comes to uh, healthy behaviors um, and, and health care in general. You know, it's one of the reasons why we put a beat behind hand washing. You know, who would have thought you could make a song about hand washing? But we put a beat behind hand washing and, and it went viral. And we have a lot of people really enthusiastic about hand washing, you know, because of the work that we do. It's one of the reasons why we put a ballad behind wearing a mask, because we believe that music has takes takes our spirit to that that higher level of engagement where we really become mindful of activities uh, that music opens up to our minds uh, to perceive and experience in a new way. And so we're in the business of creating experiences. Uh, and if you go to our website, you will see more than 140 free resources that we have for, for school wellness councils, for families, for children. But these aren't just resources. These are, these are experiences uh, that have been captured within these resources that we hope everyone will benefit from. We've done work in, in childhood obesity, nutrition, physical activity. We've done work even in stroke. Uh, we, we have done an extensive amount of work uh, looking at the science of what we do. Um, we believe that everything at Hip Hop Public Health must be filtered through the lens of science. It must be research-backed. It must be research-driven. Research um, we truly believe in distilling out the facts and making it easy for people to understand. And so, so we, we, we took hip hop music and we did research on its ability to teach and its, on its ability to change health behavior. And the results that we have are so powerful. And we encourage everybody, every teacher, every parent uh, to visit our website and check out some of those incredible results that we've had. But, but um, you know, today is about community and we have an incredible community on this panel. Uh, and, um, and I think it would be wonderful for our audience um, for, for, for me to, for, for each of you to say a few words uh, about what you do, uh, why you're excited to be here today, um, and, um, and why you're committed um, uh, to community immunity. Uh, how about we start with um, um, Dr. Monique Hedman. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Monique, also known as Dr. Mo Flo. Um, or Dr. Mo, whichever you prefer. I'm here with what you need to know. Um, I'm a family medicine doctor, I'm an intern at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. And so I take care of everyone, everyone from pregnant women and brand new babies to children, um, adults and older adults. I've been rocking with Dr. Williams uh, since before I was a doctor in 2009, uh, delivering hip hop public health programs all over the city. Uh, dropping bars to help educate people about health. And um, now I'm, I went to medical school and just finished last year 
And I'm very um, honored to uh, be working as a doctor taking care of our communities. Uh, and I'm participating in this project, Community Immunity, because it's so important that we all know what we need to do to pitch in to save lives and come together um, in our communities to beat this pandemic. And, um, you know, we have to just really think outside the box and um, use all the ways that we can be creative to get these messages across and make sure that they land in a way that will stick. And so I'm so honored to be here. And uh, together, if we come together, we can beat this. Uh, we have to achieve this community immunity. And uh, it just takes a, it takes a village. So thank Mo you. Flo. Mo flow, Mo flow, Mo flow. <laughs> look, look, let, let me just say this. Um, when Monique says she drops bars, uh, believe that she does. Uh, there's a reason why we call her Mo Flo. And next week, actually, um, uh, Monique stars in the next video that we will be releasing on community immunity. Um, and 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 boy, uh, is the world in for a treat. So thank you, Mo Flo. Thank you, Dr. Monique Hedman. We're so proud of you uh, to see a young black woman, physician, doctor, a public health expert, community advocate extraordinaire, you know, holding it down. I mean, Monique, man, we need to clone you because you are really an inspiration to all of us. So thank you, Monique. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, Emanuela. Um, Emanuela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Weekend Wellness. Um, my name is Emanuela Marat. I um, often go by Emma, and I work as the Health Education Program Manager over at the Office of Wellness Programs, um, which, as you remember, Deputy Chancellor Robinson shared, uh, is where we support schools with offering skills-based, comprehensive health education, physical education, and wellness programs to support what's taught in the classroom. Um, in my role as health education program manager, I support two programs, two citywide programs that essentially increase students' access to health services and information and strengthens and bolsters um, health education for students citywide for grades K through 12. Well, my Emanuela, thank you so much. Your work, your work is so valuable. You know, I always say, you know, for, for, for people like Monique and I who are sitting you know, in our hospitals on the front lines, uh, we're treating so many different conditions. And a lot of the conditions um, are, are really driven sometimes by just the lack of health literacy, the lack of people not knowing what to do, the lack of people not knowing how to eat better or where to eat better, the lack of people not understanding the role that exercise has on, on, on your body, the lack of people not understanding the power of, of, of th simple things like meditation and, and having brain breaks. You know, there's so many things that you bring to the table for our New York City kids, Emanuela. And, and I'm telling you that your work is what really keeps people away from people like me and Monique. The education that you do is critical because look, man, if you put me out of business, I will be, my job is done. And I'll just join DMC on the, uh, on the, the hip hop circuit. You know, Monique, yo, yo, you make room for us, D, right? And, yes, and sir. You, you run DMC plus. <laughs> I'm about talking Mo Flow, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Give me a yes, job, sir. right? <laughs> yes, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so on, you on, that note, on that note, I just want to bring in um, DMC to say, say a few words. I just want to say one thing, that there are very, very few artists in this world that not only have attained the heights of Run DMC, I mean, this is... He is half of a, 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 a one third of a legendary, legendary organization. And I mean, Jam Master Jay, rest in peace, Jam Master Jay. But he's one third of a legendary organization that has really transformed hip hop, took it out of the shadows and brought it for the whole world to see. But, but one of the things that I love the most about D is his heart, is his heart. Because at the end of the day, it is not the size or the scope of what we do that matters in life. It is our ability to hear the cry of a single heart and respond to it. And that is what D does. Uh, and so D, why don't you say a few words to, to our community? 
Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Thank you, Doc, for putting me down with the crew. You know, like you said, Doc, hip hop is not just about entertainment. Hip hop is a way of life. And that word life is very significant because if hip hop could teach you what to wear, if hip hop could teach you what to drive, if hip hop could teach you how to talk, it must be utilized as a medium to teach people how to live and survive. And it's, it's very, um, I'm very excited to be working with the New York Department of Education because that's a key word when it comes to hip hop. When I was a little kid, I learned so much about what to do, not just mentally, but also physically. You know, those early rap songs talked about, you know, um, fish, chicken, beef, and potatoes, how to get a salad with some lettuce and tomatoes. Um, the legendary Kumo D told me as a little kid, no matter what your conditions or surroundings is, how important education is. He was like, once a nobody from the neighborhood, I took a hop to the top because I knew that I would excel over the rest because I make progress. I don't consider it luck because I'm not blessed. I got my life all together. Love the way that I live. Go to school. No, I'm cool. And I think positive because it's all right to have fun, lots of pleasures and joy. But it's the brain that separates the men from the boys. I was a little 15 year old kid. He probably was only like 17. So hip hop in music, in, 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 in the arts. The arts succeeds where politics and religion fails. So whether it was Bob Dylan or John Fogarty or Jim Croce or Joni Mitchell or, or, or Marvin Gaye telling us, you know, what's going on, we have to use our arts to educate because what we are up against has a lot of misinformation I tell people, stay off the internet. <laughs> and if we're dealing with professionals in positions and in, in places in our community that are working to educate and save lives, it's an honor and pleasure for me to use this gift of hip hop, which is cool to rock around, it's tricky to rock around. But when you have purpose, when we have purpose, we will be able to persevere. So the reason when Doug called and Doc was like, yo, I got Chuck D on board, I was, I'm down, I'm in. Because we are just a group of professionals, you know, doctors, artists, producers, writers, journalists, um, lawyers, everybody on this team is using their positions in our community to educate, motivate, inspire, and save lives. And so it's an honor and pleasure to be with the kings and the queens on this panel in this mission. Thank you so much, D. DMC in the place to be. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna pivot right now and talk talk about uh, community immunity um, because you know we are in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it's a global pandemic but it's also a pandemic that affects brown and black communities more than any other community it's a it, it's it's uh, you know i like to I, i'd like to i'd like to, to to share just very briefly um an experience that that really really um just devastated me personally um i remember at the height of the pandemic um, when you know all hell was breaking loose and we had the virus hit New York City, we didn't really know what was going on, and we didn't know whether we needed to wear masks or not wear masks. We didn't. We didn't have enough tests. We were. We, we didn't. You know, we, people would come in and we wouldn't have enough tests, and some people would go out, and it, it was just complete pandemonium. And and we were thrown into the thick of things. You know, I'm a neurologist, and and we had crash crash courses and how to treat COVID patients. They took everybody and they deployed us to different parts of the hospital. They said, Dr. Williams, you know, you're gonna run the stroke, the COVID, uh, COVID D unit. And, and it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, and, um, and, and there was death all around us, all around us. And, and I remember when, when I was running one of these COVID units back at the height of the pandemic, 90%, 90% of my patients were black or brown. 90% of my patients were black or brown. 
and, and I work in New York Presbyterian at Columbia University Medical Center. And I remember a particular an uh, anecdote that I just want to share real quick. I had, I had a husband and wife, both of whom had COVID. The husband was my patient on the eighth floor. The wife was with another team on the sixth, on the seventh floor. And the wife and the husband had severe COVID and I wasn't sure who was gonna make it. The husband started doing better and he was the one on my service and we started turning him around and he was getting better. And he kept asking me about his wife who was doing badly on the floor below us. And I remember going into his room every day and, um, and at that time I, I was just praying that the couple, both, both of them survived, but I was pretty sure that the husband was gonna pull through. And so what we did is because at that time that you weren't allowed any visitors and you know, families who had, uh, families would have to have iPad conversations or just, just iPad, iPad viewings just to see their loved ones, they'd have to see them through an iPad. And I remember um, you know, with meeting with my team and, and we decided that we didn't want, we didn't want the wife or the husband, especially the wife, to die alone. And the husband told us that, look, if there's any way I can see my wife, but unfortunately he was still heavily infected. And so when I, when I would go into his room, I would sit with him and say, let me see what I can do. And so we took his wife and we moved his wife from the floor below us to the same room as, as the husband. But his wife was really sick. She was huffing and puffing and, and we knew she was gonna die. But we brought her in with the husband and the husband was with the wife and he thanked me profusely uh, for bringing his wife in and having, having her next to him. And he basically was there when she died because shortly after we brought the wife to be with his husband, shortly after she died within the next 48 hours, uh, but at least they died together. And that, that is a lot because a lot of people were dying alone. And so I say that to say that what we're dealing with is a dangerous disease that affects communities of color, affects people like us more than anybody else. And there are really deep reasons for that. There are real structural reasons for that uh, that are linked to racism. But we're not really here to talk about racism. We're here to talk about the need for community immunity, the need for the vaccine. And the reason why Hip Hop Public Health created this anthology of resources called community immunity is because there is a way to avoid that situation. There is a way to avoid being hospitalized altogether for this disease. There is a way to survive. And that way is through community immunity. So we're gonna get right into this. Uh, and I'm going to, um, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the five different resources that we've created around community immunity. And the first one we're going to talk about is, 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 uh, is, is basically uh, what are vaccines uh, and how do they work? Uh, and this is, uh, this is an incredible uh, uh, track that we came out of the gate with uh, that, that we released a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so how about, you know, before we get into the video, how about Mo, Dr. Monique, uh, how about you tell us a little bit uh, about, you know, about, you know, what are vaccines and, and, and how do they work? Well, vaccines are a really special type of medical product that basically teaches our bodies how to fight different pathogens, uh, whether they be bacterium or viruses or, um, or fung fungi. So basically, you know, we have this, in, this incredible machinery within our bodies and our cells that when it encounters something that's not supposed to be there, that's foreign, um, our body produces different proteins that the next time that we come up against that same pathogen, our body already has the weapons it needs to fight it off. And so um, you take a vaccine, the vaccine just basically has um, proteins in it, you know, sugar, salt, water, um, really basic ingredients. Uh, some vaccines have um, piece, like pieces of the proteins from a virus or, or a bacterium that aren't that won't cause you to have the disease and won't make you sick, but it's enough of uh, the protein to teach your body like, oh, okay, this is not normal. 
we need to be able to fight this off next time. The vaccines that have been developed for um, to fight uh, COVID, the coronavirus, are very unique in that it teaches our body how to make the protein itself. And then once we make the protein, then we make more proteins to fight the virus. It's really unique and miraculous. And basically we're teaching, we're using the miraculous things that our body does uh, to fight for us. And that's essentially what vaccines do. They're, they're basically a teacher for the body. Yeah, that's amazing. And, um, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of parents have kids and, and you guys have taken your kids to get vaccinated, you know, mumps, measles, rubella. Uh, you know, it, it's been something that's vaccinations have been part of us for a long time. Uh, and, and our kids definitely uh, are, are very familiar with vaccinations as our, as our parents. With regards to the COVID vaccine, just, just you know, some people ask, you know, when, when will COVID, the COVID vaccine be available for the kids? Well, we think that um, perhaps they might be available in, in by this summer. Um, you know, there is um, the couple of the companies, Moderna and Pfizer, for example, are are testing their vaccines in adolescents as young as age 12. Uh, so that clinical tr that trial is going on. Um, AstraZeneca, another company, has started uh, trialing actually just just as this month. They're testing it in in kids age six. Uh, and above. And so we should have certainly data on 12 years and above very soon, but we're also going to have data uh, coming through on six and above. So th the vaccine will soon be made uh, available to children. Um, and um, as Monique said, they're probably one of man's greatest inventions. And so we felt as we, as we were preparing our anthology, we wanted to basically begin by showing uh, what vaccines are and, and how do they work. Um, and um, I want to I want to just pivot to um, to, um, to to DMC for a minute because you know D you 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 were uh, you you were the, the 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 main man on on the first the first <laughs> the first track, and I'm just wondering if you could just share a little bit about the process. You know what the process was like for you, kind of um, you know, reviewing the lyrics, how how okay. it impacted you, and how you felt about putting it together. And then the final product, which we're going to see shortly. Well, the, the beautiful thing about the whole process, like I said, or when I spoke earlier, first thing I had to do was to be educated on what the vaccines do. I had to be educated on past vaccines, their purpose. So I had to have an understanding of what the vaccination is all about. So that helps me to be more, um, more, my presentation when I'm talking about the vaccine, that helps people not be so fearful. So the force that we're using is we're using the facts, factual, scientific, historical information to explain to the people, to the world, what the vaccines do so that they don't have so much anxiety, so that they don't have so much fear. Because even for me, I didn't understand it until the doctors informed me of what they do, what's going on. Um, Dr. Williams told me about, you know, his fight with Ebola. He explained to me about um, MERS and SARS and all of that. So it started to be familiar to me. And I was like, oh, so we're basically going to be doing what y'all done for those things for us. So once I got a basic understanding about that, putting it in, putting it into my own words so I could communicate the right information to the listener. Because a lot of people have a lot of fear when they don't understand something. And a lot of people have a lot of fear if nobody explains it to them. And then, like I said earlier, you got all of this information on the internet and on social media. And people are always on social media, so they're going to believe that more than they believe their own doctor. So once I had an understanding and once I was understanding that this isn't something new, a lot of people think that they just made this vaccine yesterday and they're going to put it into you and you're going to turn into a zombie and they're going to put a chip into you and Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and Illuminati. I was like, no, 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 that's true. So we presented it in a record in a form where the listener can really get an understanding of the true scientific facts about what the vaccine does. So it was an educational process for me. And that's how education is supposed to learn. You learn something, then you understand it, and then you go out and teach 
or show the world what it's about. And it, it's something that hip hop has always been able to utilize, whether it was Run DMC, whether it was KRS-One, whether it was Public Enemy. We always got the information, got an understanding of that information. And before we put it on a record to release it to the world, that makes us confident that what we're doing is going to um, save lives, educate people, and not harm us anymore. So, Emanuela, um, so you know, as, as a health education expert, I was wondering if um, mm -hmm. you could, you could share a few insights into some of the strategies that you've used around um, other types of childhood vaccination and educating uh, your constituents and the parents about that those other. Uh, vaccines and perhaps the, the lessons that we can learn uh, from from that process that is that, that you've developed. Yeah, absolutely. And so in health education, students learn multiple ways to keep themselves healthy and safe. They learn about the immune system and how to prevent diseases through good health and safety practices. And across the country, there are eight national health ed standards that drive what students learn in the health education classroom. So because throughout the morning, I'll talk about some of these standards, but perhaps the most important thing to know right now is that seven out of the eight standards are skills based. So students are practicing ways to effectively communicate to set goals and make decisions all around their health. Um, and the one goal, the one out of the eight standards is focused on understanding health concepts, concepts like what are vaccines and how do they work? Um, making sure students have the knowledge that they need to keep themselves safe and healthy, along with the skills that they need um, to put what they're learning, these concepts, into action. Um, and in the past fall, the DOE released a, a bridge to school plan as part of our return to school plan. And some of the concepts in the document included the importance of hand washing and covering uh, mouths and sneezing or coughing or like, the importance of wearing masks or phys keeping physical distance, all of which should continue after widespread vaccinations. And so one of the many roles of health education is to provide students with the, the knowledge, like the content that they need to keep themselves safe and healthy. And that can include um, getting vaccinations and also how they can apply what they're learning in the classroom so that they can maintain these lifelong skills that they're learning. Thank you. So, so let's, let's go to the video. The vaccine, you got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine. We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine. It's about community immunity. I'm talking unity for you and me. If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good. Now let's all get the vaccine. There is none higher. DMC, I will inspire. Time for us to trust and not debate. The vaccine, believe it's safe to take. Nine out of ten people won't get sick. That's 90% effective and legit. This COVID thing is real and it will find you. It's killing our people. Let me remind you. Back in the days, back in the days, there was polio, smallpox. Back in the days, measles and mumps, man. Back in the days, but because of the vaccines, none of those days. Vaccines, they work to trigger immunity. Two shots, we got antibody security. We gotta act now. No need to wait. Get your vaccine before it's too late. For real. That was that was great. Thank you. That was uh, amazing. <laughs> that hook is so catchy. It is, it's so it is. catchy. I got the vaccine. You got the vaccine. Let's so get the so, vaccine. So let's um let's talk a little bit about you know one of the most more sensitive issues um, around these vaccines, which is the issue, the issue of of, of safety um, and how do we how do we know it's safe? So. So just to break it down for, for people, the, the five components, the five videos that we were releasing, the first is the one you just saw, which really deals with what they are. The second talks about safety and mistrust issues. The third talks about misperceptions, misinformation. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. The fourth talks about what to expect uh, when you get the vaccine. And the fifth really talks about why getting the vaccine is better than getting COVID. Uh, and so we're gonna go through each one and we have videos around each one. We're only gonna be showing you three of the five videos because we're gonna be releasing the next two uh, uh, next week and the week after. But let's get right, right into the safety issue because a lot of people, Mo and Dr. Mo, are concerned about the safety of these vaccines. 
and um, and and so how do we know uh, that the vaccines are safe? Well, you know, anytime any kind of medical product or medicine is developed, it goes through a very rigorous uh, scientific evaluation, um, and there's multiple phases to that evaluation. And um, you know, they definitely we definitely don't want to release anything to the public unless we're absolutely sure that it's safe with as, as minimal side effects as possible. And so uh, as far as this vaccine is concerned, a lot of people were concerned like, oh, it was developed so quickly, like how can we trust it? The bottom line is that this type of vaccine technology has been studied for decades uh, and has been looked at to treat cancer and other types of viruses. And so we already had the, uh, the technology ready to go uh, when it was time to develop this vaccine. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people have been looking at it a bit skeptically just because we have to acknowledge the fact that uh, there is an established history of there being harm caused um, by the medical establishment, particularly against brown and black bodies. And we have to acknowledge that real history, um, you know, everything from uh, the Tuskegee experiment, um, I learned about um, uh, radiation exposure in Cincinnati, and there's multiple examples of this throughout history. And so what we have to understand is that we have folks like myself, like Dr. Williams, like Dr. Corbett, who helped develop the Moderna Max, uh, vaccine. We have Black people, Black doctors and Black scientists who are, our mission is to make sure that these types of crimes are not perpetuated against our communities again. And it is our job to make sure that anything that is being offered like a vaccine or a medicine to our communities is as safe and efficacious as possible. That's fantastic, Mo. So how about um, uh, we, go, we go straight to uh, video two. The vaccine, you got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine. We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine. It's about community immunity, I'm talking unity for you and me. If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good. Now let's all get the vaccine. Trust me, believe me, we're not gonna have another Tuskegee. This ain't eugenics, uh-uh, no way. Nobody getting away with hiding information today. Got the FDA, CDC, black doctors and experts for you and me. There's a whole lot of data for the world is free. Do me a favor, check it out and you see. I gotta give a shout out to all of those involved that's helping us get this problem solved. People wanna know, is the vaccine safe? It doesn't have anything to do with race. Nine out of 10 people won't get sick that's 90 percent effective and legit we gotta act now please don't wait get the vaccine before it's too late for real thank you so much uh, again another great track you know d real quickly uh -huh. what, what are you what have you been what have you been hearing about um about some of the the misinformation and uh, what are some of the things that you're hearing from 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 the community about why they're so scared of, of this vaccine well, well, a lot of people are saying they out to get black people. Um, it's not scientifically possible to create a vaccine. You can't, um, um, you can't, um, uh, you can't um, enhance your immune system to fight viruses. Oh, you're going to get sick. You're going to turn into a zombie and all of that. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of fear, but. The fear is just because there's no truth out there. You know, I told people, yo, if, if, if something was wrong with this vaccine that they created for COVID, all of the doctors that I know, why you don't see doctors on the news saying don't take the vaccine? But everybody is saying, listening to people who have no knowledge or understanding or truth behind what they're saying. So it's confusion. And of course, there's going to be, like Dr. Mo said, of course, there's going to be anxiety. As soon as you say, go get a shot, like, no, nah, Tuskegee, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? So if we can use factual information from a community of health professionals that look and sound and come from the same places of us, there will be less anxiety and less fear. So. 
I always say, don't listen to what people are saying on the internet. Listen to your doctor, you know what I'm saying? Because we're in the business of saving lives. And like, even just to give examples to people, you know, I had to go to South Africa a couple of years ago, you know what I'm saying? Because this is my livelihood. I had to go to South Africa. So they told me I had to go get seven shots, seven. Now, I went and got the seven shots, uh, pain in the arm, a little tired, but that's your body working. Now, if I was able to go get seven shots to go over to South Africa, why wouldn't y'all understand that I had to go somewhere where something was at to protect myself? But now, the thing that's out to get us has come to our hometown. So why wouldn't you go get a shot? Why wouldn't you go get one or two shots to protect y'all in your nation to say, well, I had to go get seven to go to Africa, the motherland. So people was like, quiet. But see, the reason why I bring that up is I can prove to you that there is a reason and a purpose that us black folks should go get the shot. Real, real. So I just want to quickly go through some of these things that, uh, that that are bothering a lot of people. So there's a lot going on on social media around vaccine misinformation. I just want to highlight some of them. First of all, and, um, and I'm going to speak from a place of science and facts. First of all, the vaccines do not cause COVID. They do not call you cannot catch COVID from the vaccine. That's number one. You know, there is no live uh, active virus being injected into anyone. Um, there, you know, it's, it, it's impossible to get infected um, from these vaccines. That's number one. And number two, some people are concerned uh, that the vaccine uh, may, 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 may cause facial paralysis, for example. Again, you know, I'm speaking as a neurologist here, someone who treats facial paralysis for a living. And I can tell you that the vaccines do not cause facial paralysis. In fact, that has been very, very eff effectively debunked. Another thing floating around is that the vaccines contain aborted fetal tissue. So you're getting injected with aborted, aborted fetal tissue. Again, that is not true. That has been debunked. Uh, the vaccines do not contain aborted fetal tissue specimens. Another thing that we've been hearing is that, is that if you have, uh, if you have um, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, you have these comorbidities, uh, you should not get the vaccine if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, etc. That's actually the opposite. You should get the vaccine. In fact, you are at the most high risk for getting severe COVID and from dying from COVID if you have one of these conditions and don't get vaccinated. We are encouraging everyone with these comorbidities to get back. And that's one of the reasons why in New York City, the next, the, the people currently available to get vaccinated are those with these comorbidities because we understand that they need it the most. Another thing that I've been hearing um, is that the vaccine affects your fertility. Again, it does not affect your fertility. Um, there is no evidence to, to, to suggest the vaccine affects your fertility. Um, another thing that I've heard is that the vaccine causes autoimmune disease. Again, it does, it does not cause autoimmune disease. Remember that more than 41 million Americans have been vaccinated. Remember that the first vaccinations that occurred in the early phase one trials occurred in March of 2020. So we have thousands of people who are hit at the one year mark from vaccination and they are all doing well in addition to those 41 million or so Americans that have received the vaccines. We're tracking every side effect. Every single side effect is being tracked in a, in a central database. And so we are not seeing any of these, uh, any of these horrific, sensationalized uh, cases of side effects that the internet is promoting. The vaccines are safe. Um, and, um, and so we, we created a song, uh, the next video you're about to see, uh, that talks about why the vaccines are safe. And um, it actually features yours truly. You know, I told you, D, look, man, if I if, if we manage to cure illness, I'm joining <laughs> I'm joining Run DMC. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna watch my bars right now and you're gonna give me a grade All after right. you hear this. So, okay. so um, and, and just for the audience, just recognize that in every song, every video that we produce, the hook is the same. 
You know, the reason why we do that is that we want that hook to get stuck in people. We want it to normalize. We want to normalize the whole the whole process of getting a vaccine. You know, vaccination should be a social norm because it's the only way we're going to get out of the current pandemic that we face. So let's go to the next video. The vaccine, you got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine. We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine. It's about community immunity. I'm talking unity for you and me. If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good. Now let's all get the vaccine. Hey, Doc, what's going on? I got a question. About the vaccine lies and misperception. Now if it's true or if it's false, I mean a lot of people lost. They want to know, do you got any suggestions? I got a few. Now I'm going to do my part to help. The vaccine is safe, I got the shot myself. The misinformation, a lot of people facing the hip hop doc came to erase it. Now, they say the shot'll give you COVID. Nah, it, it won't, won't give you COVID. Now wait a sec, you saying it protects you from COVID? Not only will the vaccine protect, but those with underlying conditions need it more than the rest. Will it affect our DNA? That's false, don't believe it. The vaccine will help us, we need it. This not just the moment of truth, but, but a, a moment for truth. truth. The vaccine is safe, believe it. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yo, D, D, what do you think? Yo, what do you think? Oh, oh, man, yo. Do I get to that, join you? Yeah, do man. I get to join you? Yo, that, that back and flow and your flow, yeah. man, that, that rivals the Furious Five, Run DMC, and the Treacherous Street, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely. All yo, right. You, so. you from Harlem, man. You up in Harlem. So, you know, you Harlem world all the way. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Um, so, I think it, it's, it, it's, 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 um, it's important for us to quickly talk about um, getting the shot. A lot of parents, a lot of families are now in the process of, 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 of meeting eligibility to get the shots. Uh, and, um, and so Monique, can you just talk briefly about your experience uh, when you had the shot? Uh, and I will again uh, share my brief experience when I had the shot. Sure. So, you know, I got the first shot, I got Pfizer shot uh, a couple of days before Christmas. I didn't really have, um, you know, any major side effects. I had a little bit of soreness in my arm. I maybe had a little bit of a headache, but it wasn't too bad. And then uh, about three weeks later, I got the second shot. Uh, the day after I got the second shot, I did feel a little bit more. I still had the soreness in my arm, but then I also had a little bit more of a headache. I maybe felt like a little bit hot. Um, maybe felt like I had a little bit of chills. I was a little bit tired. Um, and so, you know, that night I went to bed. I think I took a little bit of Tylenol, went to bed. Next morning, I felt completely fine. Um, my mother has, my mother and father have all gotten the shot. Um, and I've heard similar reports from other people. But, you know, those side, of, you know, those my, very mild side effects resolved, you know, within a day or two. Yeah, yeah. And I had exactly the same experience. And so, you know, um, Emanuela, um, can you can you tell us a little bit? You know, there's so much misinformation out there. Um, you know, how can how can parents learn from from what kids are learning uh, in health education? Well, absolutely. Um, and so, there is a DOE wellness policy that explains or describes um, the health education, physical education, and wellness related opportunities that are available to every school. It guides the wellness work and instruction of every school. And in reading the policy, we encourage families, caretakers to speak to the administrators at their school, to speak to the educators at their school about the policy so that they can learn more about what's being covered in health ed. Um, you all had mentioned before that, and I am in full agreement, that there's a lack of knowledge and misunderstanding that's giving rise to the fear around getting the vaccine is impacting folks' decision around getting the vaccine. Um, but in health education, students learn how to access valid, medically accurate information, how to access health services. And with so many of us, students and adults alike, spending tons of hours and time um, on screens, like we're inundated with misinformation. And so do health ed students get to learn how to discern between like what's fact and what's fiction? And parents have an opportunity to strike conversations with the administrators at their school using the wellness policy as a basis to learn more about what additional skills or concepts are covered in health ed. That's wonderful. And I just want to uh, bring bring this panel to a close um, um, by saying just a few things. Uh, first, um, I just want to say that 
yes, the vaccines are safe, uh, and I'm, and you can go to Hip Hop Public Health's website. We have a lot of uh, uh, Q and A's, FAQs, ask the doctors uh, questions. If if there are other questions that you would like us to answer, uh, please uh, send us uh, a, an email through our info uh, address, and we'll get back to you with with all your questions. Um, I think it's also important for me to just emphasize that. Yes, the vaccines certainly protect us. Uh, yes, they are even emerging evidence they can reduce transmission. Absolutely, all three vaccines, all three of them, all three of them are incredibly effective uh, in preventing hospitalization and death. I think 100% prevention of hospitalization or severe disease and death. Um, and so my recommendation, if you're offered any one of those three vaccines, it's important to take those, take, take the one you're offered uh, and then finally, I just want to say that, be, that because we are increasing vaccination, we're still a long way away from herd immunity. Herd immunity is what we call community immunity. And that is when 80% of our community has been vaccinated. And it's important for 80% of every community to be vaccinated, whether it's Harlem, Bed-Stuy, whether it's South Bronx, every community, we need 80% vaccination, not just to protect the entire community, but we also need it to, so that we can stop the virus from mutating, from, from emerging and changing into new variants. The quicker we get community immunity, the less likely these new variants have the chance, the chance to emerge and start setting us back. And so how, until we get to that threshold, until we are all vaccinated and we have community immunity, it's critically important for us to continue wearing our masks, continue to wash our hands, continue to socially distance. It's critically important to continue to practice these safety measures uh, because we're still in the, we're still in the midst of a pandemic. We're not out of the woods yet. We're not at community immunity yet. So please uh, continue to practice uh, these um, these very important safety measures. Uh, on that note, I just want to uh, hand it over to Emanuela um, to, to to talk to us about about what what comes next. Emanuela. Yes, thank you. Well, first, just want to give big thanks to Hip Hop Public Health for your partnership and collaboration on this weekend wellness series. Thank you, DMC, Dr. Williams, Dr. Hedman, for your time and insight this morning. Our office appreciates you all. And we are excited to kick off this series with you and hope you all that are watching are excited too. And if you learned something this morning, please share it with someone, anyone. Um, and you hope, we hope that you join us for our next session, which is scheduled for Saturday, March 20th. And the focus will be on mental health and physical activity, um, another area that our, our office focuses on. And so if you'd like to learn more about all of the great work happening at the Office of School Wellness Programs, uh, you're welcome to visit schools.nyc.gov slash wellness, where you'll be able to sign up for our e-newsletter, School Wellness Weekly. And that offers a ton of um, information and resources on health ed, PE, um, wellness initiatives within the school community and also work happening outside of the school community, like within the neighboring community. Um, and you could also learn more through the website, which is schools.nyc.gov, about ways to get involved with your, your child's school wellness council. And so at the very beginning of our session, uh, Deputy Chancellor Robinson explained that school wellness councils are essentially a group of folks in the school building or community that care about health and wellness. And so we encourage you to reach out to your administrators, your health educators or PE teachers at the school to, to start or sustain a council. Um, and if you have any information that, um, that you're interested in learning about hip hop public health, visit hhph.org. And we hope that you all enjoyed this uh, weekend wellness series and want to remind you all that self-care is good for everyone. Um, and we ask that you all just spread the word and together we can end this pandemic and really get to community immunity. So let's end, let's end with a message of love. Play the videotape. Let's beat this, let's beat united, the love life way. Together, together, together. Oh, 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 oh. It's a symbol of love, a symbol of trust between us.